In today's video, I'm going to show you how to watermark. Last week, we talked about if you should or you shouldn't. If you do want to, I'm going to take you into Lightroom and show you how it's done. Stick around. So watermarking is fairly simple. Uh, you can do text or you can do a graphic watermark. Uh, I'm going to take you into Lightroom and show you how to do both. It's 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 fairly simple process. You just have to know where the things are and then once you get the hang of it you can save your watermark as a preset and then quickly apply it when you export in the future. Stick around at the end of the video because I'm going to talk about where we had our logo made and if it's something you might be interested in doing. Okay, so let's jump into the computer here. So the first thing you can do is from the develop module or the library module, you can under edit, hit edit watermarks, and it's going to bring up the highlighted image. When this window is open, you are going to start off with a copyright. So I'm going to highlight the text and I'm going to change it. Okay, so that's the text and you can see it. it's on the image now. If I wanted to, I could choose a PNG or JPEG image to apply to the photo and not use text at all. But for this example, I'm going to show you how to use text. Now I can change the text to any font I want. So you just click on the font and it'll change it. Uh, you can regular bold italic, bold italic. This align is actually aligning the text in the text box. But since the text box fits this perfectly, it really doesn't do much. So if you watch it really, it doesn't make a difference here. This box will change the color of the text. So if I wanted to pick black, let's see how that looks. So now it's the text is in black. I'm not going to use black. I'm going to use white here. But you can see you have any choice basically inside of the black and white spectrum that you want to pick from. And wherever you put this eyedropper, that's the color it's going to pick. And once you click onto the right side here, you'll see some color choices pop up. And now I can make it any color I want. So if you look here, I went with lime green. Now, I don't want lime green. I want white. But you, you can get creative with this and do whatever you really want with it. So the next thing, and let's make this big so you can see it. So I have shadow checked off. If I uncheck that, it'll just be the white text that I had put on there. Now, if I want, I can add a shadow to it. I can offset the shadow in any direction that I want. You know, I can change the, the radius, I can change the angle of it. So you can move around the shadow if you want to have a drop shadow on your images. You, know, you can change the opacity of it. So this, these are all just creative choices that you can, you know, play around with if you want. The opacity is the actual opacity of the whole watermark. So you can make it super bright, or if you just want to have a hint of a watermark, you can lower the opacity so it's just something there. Now, some people will take their watermark and like I talked about in my other video, they'll make it huge and slap it across the whole image. And that's something you can do if you would like to. And then this changes the size of it also. So you can just grab it and pull it or you can do it with this slider. So make it fit in the, or you can fill it. You know, these are all just controls to let you customize the size and placement of your watermark. Within the bottom left corner of this image, I can move it up or down. But it doesn't let me move it all around the image. So I would have to click down here. Now if I want to move it to the top right, it'll put it up there. And I can, again, move it where I want it to go. So you get the idea. If you want it in the middle. And, you know, so you just move it around here with this. So those are the controls inside of here. If this was something I'd want to save, I would click Save. I would title it. So I'll say... D-I-M for Disney Image Makers, example, one, and I'll hit create. It didn't do anything with that. All I did was edit the watermark. So if I right click on it and go to export, or I can go down here to the bottom left and click export, the export dialog box is going to come up. So inside of here, you have a many different parameters that you can change when you're exporting an image to file size, um, pixels, the quality. But one of the things in here is applying a watermark. So when you look down here, it says watermarking and I have it checked off. Now if I uncheck that and hit export, it'll export this image wherever I've told it to. 
So right here I have it going to Disneyland June, even though that's not the right folder. Um, but when I click it on, now I have my watermarks that I've made. So if I click on Disney Example 1, it's going to apply that watermark that I just made to the image. And when I click Export, that image is going to be exported with that. And if you look up here in the top left, you'll see that's exactly what happened. Now if I click open that file, now I know it went to the Disneyland June. So here's that image, and if I click on it, there's my watermark. Now if I want to do that again, right click, export, it's all going to the same place. Now if I want to change that, I'm going to use our new logo. I'm going to put it on the bottom left and export. Now I've already saved our new logo as a preset. Now I've already exported this image. Lightroom is asking me what do I want to do? Do I want to overwrite it or do I want to use a unique name? And they'll usually just put a number after the file so that you can uh, export the same image more than once. So that image should be in there now also. So let's take a look. Here's number two and there's our logo at the bottom left. So once you create a logo and you have it in your watermarks, so when you open this up to apply a watermark, if you wanted to apply something different, you can hit Edit Watermarks right from the export window, and it's going to bring up that ex exact same dialog box. But this time, I have my Disney Image Makers logo put here. So I don't have any of these controls as far as text or anything because it's not a text logo. It's actually a PNG. I can still move it around where I want and the opacity and do all of those things. But once you change any of these parameters that you've made already, now it's going to ask you to create a new. So let me watch. I'll adjust the opacity. Now if I go to hit save, it's going to want me to rename that again because I've changed it from the previous one. So I'm going to cancel that. So now when I go back in here, it watermarks. It still has my logo here. And I can apply the bottom right one is here. I have uh, the one I just made, the Disney Image Makers example. So if I click on Disney Image Makers bottom left custom and go to the text style here, I can highlight this down here and I can start again putting whatever I want. So if I wanted to make a watermark that said Bill. So now that's down there and I can do whatever I want with it. I can move it around. I can have all the controls that I showed you before. And then at the end, if I want to save it, it's going to ask me to save it under a new name. I'm not going to do that though. Now there's one other thing. If I wanted to create a new graphic watermark. So let's say this is the first time I'm uploading my logo. I would go here to choose. Now I know in my computer I have in my pictures file, I have a logo file and I have our new Disney Image Makers logo here. At the end of this video I'm going to talk about how to get a logo or have a logo made. But here, here is one and you want to upload, now this is a JPEG of that image and if I apply this it's going to apply this entire white background. This is a PNG so it's a transparent background. So I'm going to click on that one, I'm going to hit choose and now you can see down here in the bottom here's our logo and because it's a PNG I have nothing around the back here so it's just the logo and this is something that when you have your logo made or you make your own logo you, when you export it when you're finished creating it you have to export it as a PNG um, if you do it as a JPEG there's going to be a white background that is how you would add a actual logo like a, an image something you know a graphic or something like that and if I hit save now I could call this you know giant logo giant logo and I hit create now when I apply giant logo and export and I go back to this folder there it is with the giant logo on it so you have control over all of your watermarking. So that's pretty much it. It's not too hard to watermark your images and you can customize it any way you want. But I wanted to talk about the logo that we had made. You know, Eric and I are photographers and we've gotten very comfortable in Lightroom, but graphic design is not something that we are super comfortable doing. So what I ended up doing is going on Fiverr 
and I found a graphic designer that had some good reviews. I contacted them and said this is what we were looking for and within an hour with a little back and forth um, I had this new Disney Image Makers logo that you see on our social media accounts and everything else that we do. So if you're not comfortable with that, don't be afraid to hire somebody to do something for you. It wasn't super expensive and you know there's plenty of creatives out there that are uh, basically freelancing and you can get them to you know do some work for you if you're maybe not into design and um, you know whatever it is you're looking to do. There's probably somebody out there that's pretty good at it and is you know willing to work for you. So give it a shot. I used Fiverr. I'm sure there's other services out there like that. Um, but the whole process was super smooth and I got all the files sent to me. JPEGs, PNGs, um, vector logos, everything that I needed to use it across platforms, apply to images, using if we ever wanted to make marketing materials, anything like that. So that's something to look into if you're not comfortable with graphic design. Okay, if you like the videos, thumbs up. Uh, click the notification bell if you want more um, videos like this. And uh, we will, oh, subscribe to the channel, please. And we'll see you in the next one.